and welcome back to the studio for an unboxing. And I'm pretty excited about this unboxing. This is my first Mac in 15 years. If you watched my last video about the Vision Pro, you'll know that I really want one, but I can't buy one. But they did announce something I could buy, the MacBook Air 15 inch. So I had to spend my money. Apple had sucked me in and here we are. There's a much longer story, which I'm about to tell. But if all you care about is what's, what's in, in the box, box, skip to the next chapter and we'll start opening it. But first, I'm going to tell you a 40 year long story of my association with Macintosh and all things Apple, which I kind of alluded to in the Vision Pro video. You really should go watch it. It's, it's one of my most popular videos. By the way, I have a lot of new subscribers because of that video. In that video, I mentioned that I bought the original Macintosh day one. Okay, I lied. It wasn't really day one. It was early on. Like, it was in the first couple of months. This was back in the old days when they sold Apple computers in, in regular computer stores, you know, third-party stores. Yeah, I know you young ones don't even know what I'm talking about, but they used to have computer stores. And I bought mine at the one on Wall Street. As I mentioned in that video, I was doing IT consulting on Wall Street at the time, which is one of the reasons I had the money. And also it meant that I could deduct it because it was for business. Eh? I love tax deductions. I don't get very many anymore. And I bought an Apple modem 1200. 1200 baud. That's 120 characters per second. Yeah. The internet was fast back then. Wait, there was no internet. But you could get online and CompuServe had this thing called MOG, the uh, Apple, it was an Apple users group online where I found a lot of kindred spirits. It was kind of like the comment section of a YouTube video, except there were no videos and it was very slow and you typed very slowly. Through there, I met a whole bunch of interesting people and that's how I ended up writing for Mac User Magazine while I was still doing the IT consulting on Wall Street. The next year, 85, I bought the Apple Laser Writer, the first laser printer, for $5,000. That is $14,000 in today's dollars. But again, it was deductible. Oh, and an HD 20 hard disk. By the way, the 20 was for 20 megabytes. That was only $1,500 or $4,200 in today's money. Then in 87, I got I, at this point, I'm writing for Mac User Magazine. I'm still consulting, but I bought a Macintosh 2, which was the first so-called open Mac that had a top that you could take off and slots and stuff. It was like a PC, like a PC of today, by the way, not a PC of back then. I eventually upgraded my Mac 2 to a 2FX, which was the fastest Mac you could buy. That would have been about 1990. And that was my last desktop Mac. And I continued to use it, but then I went back to grad school and started my PhD program. And I very quickly discovered that Mac and PC did not get along in the 90s. And I had to do a lot of work, especially collaborative work where you're sh you know, sharing documents, co-writing papers. Well, Microsoft Word did not like to share its files between Mac and PC back in the 90s. I eventually had to get a PC just for school. The 2FX was my last desktop Mac, but I did buy the first PowerBook. I got a PowerBook 140. Go back and check out the, the PowerBooks. What's in this box is nothing. <laughs> it's leagues away from what, what, what that was. Well, I was still writing for Mac user while I was in grad school. And in 1993, I bought an Apple Newton. Oh my God. What a concept. What a failed execution. It was a brilliant idea, but remember, Steve Jobs was gone at this point. So this was like John Scully's brainchild. It wasn't very good. I didn't use it for long, but that was the last Mac product I bought for quite a while. I went over to the dark side. Being a Mac person came in handy because in 1995 or six, Microsoft paid Apple like Actually, they bought like $150 million worth of Apple stock, which would be worth like billions today to kind of keep Apple going because then Windows isn't a monopoly if, if the Mac is still around. But they also, in that transaction, Microsoft got the rights to the Mac interface. And Windows 98 was essentially the original interface 
from the original Macintosh. Using Windows, okay, yes, it sucked. I knew where everything was. I knew how everything worked. It, it, it served me well. I stayed on the dark side for quite some time. But then in 2007, we all know, and I mentioned in this video, the iPhone came out and I had to have one. It was so amazing. This is where it gets interesting. Those first couple of years when you stood in line to buy iPhones, the line snaked through the store. So as you're waiting in line, you're walking past a demo version of every Apple product. And you're looking at Macs and you're looking at, it, and I'm going, well, you know, this Macs thing, they've come a long way since, you know, my day. I built a house uh, in, the, in the early 2000s and I, I put in home automation. By the way, there was nothing like you can get today. It was Insteon and X10 and all this stuff. The PC programs that, that ran smart homes just weren't that good. There was one called Indigo from Indigo Domotics for the Mac that was amazing. Also, because of the iPhone, I now had to use iTunes, which I had never used before. I don't know if you ever used iTunes for Windows, but oh God, did it suck. Yeah, most of you are saying, well, it kind of sucked on the Mac too. No, but it really sucked on Windows. So I went to the Apple store somewhere around 2008, 2009 and bought an iMac, 27 inch iMac. This is how old it was. It had a optical drive in the side where you could slip CDs and DVDs in. And I used it basically to run my house because it, it left it on 24 hours a day. It ran my house and I used it to manage my iTunes library for my iPhone. I never really got back into it because I was fully on the dark side then. And I had some Windows laptops, but then the iPad came out and that just kind of changed my life. I basically never touched a Windows laptop again. I did everything on the iPad. I keep the iPad next to my chair where I watch TV and I carry it around with me. I love my iPad. I also got an Apple TV. Once they get you, once they get their hooks into you, into the ecosystem, you just kind of get in deeper and deeper. Well, yeah, well, look how deep I am now. But when I moved to this house, which was about 2014, the Mac had gotten old and it wasn't running that well and couldn't update it. I stopped using it. It's been 13 years since I've used a Macintosh really. Oh, in 2020, as I mentioned, I did get an Apple watch once it had always on display because I wasn't going to be doing this. So I'm like, I'm all into the ecosystem except for the main computer. Not long ago, I also, I, I've heard, I, ha I have arthritis in my spine and it's pinching a nerve and it's very painful now for me to cross my legs when I'm sitting down. Well, when you're using an iPad in your lap, you kind of need something to prop it up. And you're thinking, well, you could have gone and bought something. Yeah, or I could get one of these. So I did. Well, let's get in here and see what I got. So this is the 15 inch MacBook Air. I love Apple's packaging. Look, it even has extra extra padding here, but yet, yet, yet still environmentally friendly. Here is the magic box. This is the other thing I love about Apple. I love that. Apple's packaging, by the way, has been magnificent since, since the early days. Let's see what it looks like. Again. Never had a MacBook of any kind. Okay, well, we'll get back to this in a minute. Now this, I love this. The MagSafe charging cord matches the color of your, of your MacBook Air. And then there's the little packet, which again, like most people, it's almost, almost nothing to it. The stickers that come with the MacBook Air are also color coordinated. The charging. I'm not going to really travel a lot with, with this MacBook. Well, I don't think so, but you never know. So I got the 70 watt charger for high speed charging. So it just has one, one charging port, 70 watts. Well, that's what's in this box. Now let's get to the main event. This is a 15 inch MacBook Air. I think I've said that 20 times now. In midnight. Oh, it's pretty. Just to get all the, all the specs down. This is a, this has an eight core M2, four performance cores, four efficiency cores, 10 core GPU, 10, 16 core neural engine, hundred gigabits per second. 
I'm sorry, 100 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth. It's got a media engine. Well, you can you can get all this off of the Apple thing. 15.3 inch LED backlit display, 2880 by 1864 native resolution, 224 pixels per inch, support for 1 billion colors. 500 nits brightness. Now again, that's not that bright. Again, I'm, I'm not gonna be using it outside. This is probably just gonna replace my iPad. It's gonna be sitting next to me where I work, you know, where I sit in the living room, because now I'll be able to put this on my lap and I won't have to cross my legs to prop it up because, oh, it opens so other people see the logo right side up. I know that sound. I should talk about my configuration. Because I figure I'm not gonna be going through a lot of these, I added the 16 gigabyte unified memory for an extra $200 and upgraded to the one terabyte SSD for another $200. So my total was $18.99 before tax. So a little pricey. A decent Windows laptop is gonna run you that much. So what am I supposed to do? Choose my language, English. Select my country. You know, I remember when I was with, with Apple in the old days, you type U, it should take you to the United Apple States. I have selected United States, but I can't continue. Well, this is embarrassing. I didn't think I'd need to watch a video about how to set up a Mac. Cannot select my country or region. Can't go back. If I hit escape, I go into voiceover. If I do touch ID, it takes me to another thing. Okay, I'm gonna have to stop and go watch a video on how to get past the select your country or region screen because nothing on the keyboard is doing a damn thing. 20 minutes later. So it turns out I'm an idiot, which you were all yelling at the screen, you're an idiot. I'm not the only idiot because when I did the search in Apple support forums, there were several questions about how can I select my country? You know, in the Apple support forums, they have the little me too. Well, there were thousands of Me Too's. I'm not the only idiot, but of course you all know, all I had to do was touch the trackpad and a cursor would appear and I could go select. But see, there was no cursor on the screen, so I didn't think the trackpad was active yet. I was wrong. Now we have the accessibility features and I'm not gonna do any of that, although I may need to later. Then I have to pick my Wi-Fi network. Wow, this thing has good Wi-Fi. I am picking up twice as many Wi-Fi networks as I normally do. Oh, and I need a software update. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and edit it out. This is one of my pet peeves. It just shipped and it doesn't come with the software that's of it current as of today. 20 minutes remaining. But if this exercise has taught us nothing, it's that you should not rely on me for technical information. I, I mention this frequently in my videos. I do the best I can, but eh. I also see here that Apple does the same thing Windows does, which is it makes the bar go way over in like a couple of minutes and then says, well, you still got 15 minutes to go. <laughs> there we go. Installing, rebooting. This is familiar. It looks like an iPad installing an update or an iPhone. This is one thing you got to give to Apple, the consistency across the platform. They're just, it's fantastic that if you're used to it on one thing, you're used to it on another thing. It's why they put a digital crown on the Vision Pro, because you're used to it. Oh, I get to go through the setup again. Country, United States. Now I know to use the trackpad. Oh, it, it made me do my Wi-Fi network so it could download the update. And then now I have to do it again. Data and privacy. Migration assistant. Most of you will never have experienced what I'm about to do, which is no, because I'm not bringing stuff over from my PC. Oh, terms and conditions. You know things are working. All these things seem to take a long time. Like I enter my verification code and it's just spinning the little wheel. Create a computer account. This is my first Mac in a long time and I certainly hope that there's some I guess there is the accessibility stuff. I, I, I need bigger fonts. I can't read any of this stuff. It's too tiny. I'm an old man. Setting up iCloud account. You know, you watch the videos and big people just set it up boop, boop, boop because they edit out all this time. Okay, my iPhone is sitting three inches away, but it wants my iPad passcode. It asked for my iPad because it thinks I'm going to use this instead of the iPad. Well, I, I may be, so location services on, device analytics off, app analytics off. 
Siri on, Touch ID, place my finger on the thing, Apple Pay. Don't have my cards with me, so I can't set up Apple Pay because I don't have the codes. And we're in. Okay, well that only took like an hour. There's my Mac. I will be doing some customizing. I gotta make the I gotta make the text bigger. I can't. Everything's too tiny. That is the unboxing of my new MacBook Air 15 inch. Not a lot to that video except my Macintosh history, which most of you probably smartly skipped. In fact, you're probably not watching this because you're probably already gone. Either way, thanks for stopping by. If you're still here, God love you. There's going to be more Mac content on the channel because I'm going to have to get this set up. I am going to move some stuff over from my PC. And for that, I have a product I have bought, which I will be doing a unboxing and set up. It's, it's actually, there's assembly required. That'll be coming up in a week or two. So there's more Mac content coming, more Apple content coming. I'm all in now, right? I have a MacBook Air, iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch. And please, 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 I want to have a Vision Pro so badly. It will be mine. Anyway, thanks for stopping by. See you next time. Bye-bye.